everybody to another edition of Lunkers and Bucks. Today we're out at the uh, Great Dismal Swamp so on the edges. Uh, it's October 2nd, second day of hunting season. First day was pretty, pretty exciting. Four doe came by. Had clear shots at all of them, but it's buck season only. Waiting for either or. Uh, in Chesapeake, there's two seasons, buck, and then you know later on you can get some, some doe. Uh, Roker bow season starts tomorrow. It'll be either or with bow, so I might give it a shot then. Uh, but I'm in a good location. Uh, it's been raining, and the swamp is really flooded right now. Normally, uh, when I was doing my scouting, really dry. I think it's changed the deer patterns up a little bit, uh, but it also masks my smell, so I don't mind that too much. Uh, but again, I think I'm in a good location. Weather's cooler than normal. I've been hunting sometimes in October and it was 90 degrees. Not too bad. I've got some shooting lanes, I've got some thick stuff. I've got some cover so it would be harder for them to see me. And I'm way up in a tree. <laughs> Look at that. Woo! So I'm loaded. I'm in for the day. Please like and subscribe, Lunkers and Bucks. Let's get on it. One big challenge I'm having today is it's absolutely blowing. As you can see, these trees are swaying back and forth. The tree that I'm in is swaying back and forth. The problem with that is I can't see anything as well. I can't hear as much as far as deer coming in. On top of that, deer don't like to move when it's blowing like this because it messes with their sense of smell, sight, hearing. When they have those type of challenges, I find they just don't typically move very well. So hopefully this this uh, wind will die down. Um, and if it blows any harder, I'm going to need some motion sickness pills because it is rocking up in this tree. All right, it's about 12 o'clock, day two. I've reached level 1050 in Candy Crush. Checked all my emails, ate all my sandwiches, and the wind has died down. I haven't heard or seen anything yet. Of course, I did have a nice nap. A couple squirrels. Made it interesting there for a little bit. Still waiting on the big one. If you have a moment, hit that button right down there. Like and subscribe. Lunkers and Bucks. Thanks. Most of the deer I've taken out here, I've taken within 20 yards of my stand, so I work very hard to keep my scent to a minimum. So uh, some of my laundry detergent, I use all free and clear, bounce, uh, dryer sheets free and gentle, for breeze, free nature, and then of course, non-scented uh, deodorant. Uh, I don't wear my boots uh, before I get to the woods. I have them secured in a non-scented locker. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you start at, stop at 7-Eleven for donuts and coffee, and then you're, you're walking on top of gasoline scent, so you don't want to drive, you know, drive that into the field with you. So wear a different pair of shoes, change out once you get there. If you're not normally using non-scented laundry detergent, stop using scented detergent probably about a month or so before because the smell of that detergent sticks in the dryer sticks in the uh, washing machine so switch out about a month before and continue using the non-scented detergent uh, so that you get the cleanest smell possible and then of course when done i hang them outside uh, so they don't get the smell of the house or the garage or anything else uh, you want to be as scent free as possible when you get out here
All right, it's about three o'clock. I've moved my stand. Tomorrow's opening day of bow season, and it's gonna be either or, uh, which means I can shoot either bucks or does. Right now it's buck only, and uh, I ran into four deer in this spot, four does yesterday. So I'm going ahead and set up my, my stand for tomorrow because I'm going to do some bow hunting and I'm going to take whatever I find. Uh, I'm a meat hunter so I want to get some meat on the table. Um, haven't seen the buck yet. Not giving up hope for tonight but more than likely it's just going to be some does again but just in case. this spot is it gives me time to move while they're underneath the canopy with my bow. The problem I've had in the past with a bow is they see me moving trying to pull the damn thing back. Um, with all this cover I can move without them seeing me. That's the theory. Uh, and I also have a couple shooting lanes so if they poke their head out I've got something there too. This is exactly where I saw them yesterday. Got a good shot at getting them tomorrow. Uh, again, opening day of bow season. We still got a couple hours tonight. Let's see what we find. Well, after a couple hours, um, really didn't see anything else. I went ahead and got down. I'm going to work my way back up to the front, uh, closer towards the soybean fields deer hide back in the middle of the, the park during the day and then towards the, the end of the night they're, they're coming up getting close to the fields hanging out right before dark and I'm gonna uh, work my way up as I'm doing that I'm marking my trail uh, so I got some friends coming down in a couple weeks so I want them to be able to find their way back in there they don't have a GPS unit like I do uh, and at night and you know, early mornings it's, you get turned around back here easily so I'm marking the trail pretty heavily with some tape, help them find their way back in here so they can pick a new spot. But as I get up here to the front, this is where the bucks, the does, they have certain spots that they seem to have worked over pretty well that they're exiting the woods at. Uh, it can get super, super thick, and while deer will go through anything, and do have some of their favorite spots they kind of get together and kind of stage right before they get out uh, and right at dark. There's been times that five minutes after shooting time, I'm hearing them bleating, trying to find each other in the thick stuff. It drives me nuts. You know, they're sitting there all day, kind of bedded down. And then five minutes after shooting time, they're moving. Crazy. But every so often, they'll come out a little bit earlier. They get a little, uh, it's still early in the hunting scene, so they get a little lazy, a little on the comfortable side. And uh, with the youngins moving the does around, um, there's a very good shot at uh, catching something. But again, marking my trail, and you can see this is this is a perfect spot that I like to hunt. In. There's marsh, there's thick stuff, there's open areas. Uh, it's just a great place to hunt out here. Not a bad mosquito issue this year for some reason. Again, it's cooler. Hoping the rain had done something. Normally, the mosquitoes are just ripping the shreds. This year, pretty good. Um, I'm working my way up and I've already marked some of it. When I say night hunt, I mean late afternoon hunt. You can shoot up to half an hour past sunset, not a second more. Uh, and it can get pretty dark in here, so I like to make sure I know what the hell I'm shooting at. So a few minutes before, actually half hour past sunset is when I stopped shooting. Let's check it out. I moved up to about 100, 150 yards from the soybean field. They haven't harvested them yet. Cornfield's already been harvested. 
I don't know if you can see it, but there's a nice shooting lane down this little water area. Again, I can hear the deer. It's perfectly still uh, right now. I can hear them walking through the water, crunching on the sticks, as you heard earlier. They make a ton of noise when they're actually moving. And this is a perfect place where I can get my shot set up as they're moving through. Well, it's the end of day two. Uh, no luck today. Tomorrow is going to be uh, opening day of bow season, so I'll be out here bow hunting. It'll be either or. Hopefully, I'll get back on some of those does, if not that big old buck that's sitting out here someplace. Thank you for watching. Uh, Lunkers and Bucks. See you next time.